morning, everyone. Uh, today, we continue with our study on um, sorry, on auto spatial auto uh, spatial spatial auto correlation. And what this spatial auto correlation is doing is to test whether there is a correlation between uh relationship between data that we collected whether there is a correlation in our observation and we as a reminder that, uh, we have two type of correlation we have the positive correlation and we have the negative correlation and uh, when we talk of the positive correlation it simply means the two variables where we are considering is the, the if this one increase, then the other increase. Why the negative correlation is if this one increase, the other decrease. So uh, it's just a statistical test of our data. So uh, um, today we'll be looking at COVID-19 data in Nigeria. We started this last time, but we I run into issue because of the dirty data that I was using. And what did I mean by dirty data? It's because I have not cleaned up the data I'm using. So I have done a lot of cleaning. In fact, it actually took my time, but I have done a lot of cleaning now. So we now have a very clean data. And I will tell you those things uh, I do to arrive at the answer. So, but before we start, let me quickly do a, a brief recap on autocorrelation. Let me see. Okay, I'm coming. I want to see if we can look at the concept from this lecture note. A brief, a brief. Now, Spatial autocorrelation, just as we have explained, it's a cool concept to understand the ESDA. That's um, exploratory spatial data analysis. That is when you are exploring what is really inside your data, you, you want to understand a better view of your data. So we have a lot of statistical tests that we normally do. One of it is spatial autocorrelation. And in this spatial autocorrelation, we have what we call the global autocorrelation. So, uh, in this global autocorrelation, let me see if I can get the PDF. Okay. So, this is the PDF. I hope everybody can see it. Now, in this global auto correlation, what we are looking at is clustering. Do we have a cluster data over space? Do we have high high in a particular area? That means if we have high high number of observation in a particular area, such an area is an spot for the particular observation we are doing. In this case, in um, um, COVID-19 cases detected in Nigeria, the places where we have high, high there are no sports. So that means a, a, a quick decision has to be taken. So we can have high, high and we can have low, low. So in the area where we are only having low, low value, that means that place is a cold spot. And in such an area, we call it positive global autocorrelation. So we have, that means we have similar value close to each other in that area. Please, I want us to take note of this so that when we go to practical, we really make sense to us. And negative is, we have similar value far from each other. That is, uh, the, uh, maybe we detect like 20 cases 
in Lagos, ah, uh, in Lagos State, ah, uh, in Ogun State, maybe we didn't distort anything. In other laboring states in um, that have a um, boundary with Lagos, maybe we detect two or one. Now, we now go to Kano and we see another 20. You see that the, uh, the space, the distance between Lagos and Kano is far. In such a, 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 a situation, we are having a negative spatial autocorrelation. That means similar value, but far from each other. So how to measure this is what we, we use moral plots, moral plots to measure this. So it's a graphical device that display a variable on the horizontal axis against a spatial lag. I hope we can all remember what spatial lag means. Uh, we treated this uh, in our last, uh, in some of our lecture. So, now, let me, spatial lag, is just trying to find um, the difference between our observation and a particular variable. So now, when we plot our variable against a spatial lag, it gives us uh, a plot called Moran plot. So variable and spatial weight matrix are prevalently standardized. If we want to use Moran plot, we must standardize both our weight. I hope we can still remember weight matrix and our variable. It's when we multiply the weight matrix multiplied by the variable that it gives us spatial lag. I treated this in previous uh, lecture. So now, assessment of the overall association between a variable in a given location and its neighborhood is what uh, Moran High is actually telling us. Like when we look at this uh, diagram now, you see that up here, we have higher value. While here, we have low, low value. This is high, high value, low, low value. Then we can have high, low, then low, high. So in this case, we can quickly make a, a, a decision. We can quickly see how the overall data is distributed over space. So, former test of global spatial autocorrelation is more than high. Statistically, identify the presence of cluster in a variable. So the reason why we use more than high is to know where is cluster in this observation over space. See Nigeria, we are considering Nigeria, we are considering an Africa, maybe we are considering per state in Lagos state, maybe you have data for local government, we want to know where this thing is actually concentrated. So you can use this to monitor disease, you can use this to monitor crime, you can use it to monitor traffic. So it has a lot of application. So that's on that. Uh, let me quickly go to another one. That's um, come. Okay, let me go to local spatial autocorrelation. What spatial autocorrelation uh, means? So all this lecture data material will be. I will make it available for us. So. Also, in local spatial autocorrelation, is the clustering that we are looking for, but in a very limited, we don't we we don't consider the whole thing at the globe now. We are now considering at a very particular location, doing all our analysis. So, and the portion of the map where values are correlated in a particularly strong and specified way. So, in local autocorrelation. We don't use more high any longer. We now look at how significant in a particular location is this observation that we are looking for. So what are the things we will look for? It's four things. Do we have high high value in a particular place? Do we have low low value in a particular place? Do we have high low value in a particular place? 
So high low value, we can also call it spatial outliers for those who do computer um, vision. We are in photogrammetry. You will have come across what we call outliers. Outliers are data that they are, they are just significantly different when you compare them with other data in the surrounding. Maybe you have been getting 20, 15, 13. Then in one place, you just go and get 1,000. It's an outlier. So such, a, such an area, when we do statistics, we can call them high low. They can be high low or low high. They are all special, uh, special outliers. Why the place where we have high high, they are called all spots. So when we are doing all spot analysis in GIS, you should know what that means now. And places where we have low low, they are called cool spot. This thing can be very, very useful when we want to monitor crime in our environment. So you will know where you should place more police men and where you should not place more police men so that you can quickly combat crime in that area. So local indicator of spatial association, that is a local spatial autocorrelation. Statistical tests for spatial cluster detection. Those are the uses. We have statistical significance. From our uh, analysis, we can get whether our statistics is significant or not. So we can compare the observed map with many randomly generated ones. And to see how likely it is to obtain the observed association for each location. So this type of analysis will not work when we are only when we are choosing data randomly. It will not work properly. But if it's truly, if our observation is not a random observation that we are just picking data, then we will have it will give us a true picture of what is happening. So uh, that's on local autocorrelation. Now, let me quickly jump to the practical. On this practical note, I want to create a new, a new notebook so that we start from a fresh notebook. So let me create a new notebook in my working space. Already I've started my server. So let me show you where my server is. My server is already working underground here. So uh, now I want to create a Python 3 notebook here. So select, then I can give it a name if I like, but for now, let me leave it like this. So what I will be doing, let me close some of the tab I have here. Firstly, firstly I want to import all the library I need for this analysis. And these are the libraries, the seaboard that will help me look at it on the map, pandas, then import as, uh, data, exploratory data extraction analysis, ESTA. It's a Python library, which you can import. Then we are using um, PyShar. From there, we will get weight function. Then we are importing Moran scatter plot, lizard scatter, and so on. So let me not waste time on this. If I run this now, it's wrong. As you see, it's showing star, telling me that it's running. So after this, it has run and import all these data for uh, all this library for me now the next thing in my agenda is to read my shape file already i've worked on this shape file let me read it so that we can look at it together i will read the shape file here and i'm using geopandas this library imported here to read my shape file this library is good you can read any data can read an AutoCAD file. So if you have any data in any place, you can use it for your analysis. So I'm reducing it to read this shape file, which is share and save in the same directory where I am working with. So uh, if I click now, so I read it and I save it in this variable DB, that's my database. Now, 
I can quickly look at the first five value of that shaper by saying db dot edge. So when I run this, you see it display to me. I want to drag this so that we can see it very well. Oh. I'm coming. Oh. Sorry, I want us to see that thing very well. So I want to put it in nature mode, presentation mode. So, okay. And that's the best I can have now. Now, when you look at this data, you see that the country code is the ISO. We are in Nigeria. Then you see that we have Lim one here. Yeah. These are the states. We have Adbia, Adamawa, Akwaibon, Anambra, Bauchi. So now I clean up this data. I want to use this column, lim underscore one, to um, index my data because you must index it to do this analysis. So I will show you the code to index this data. But one thing, one problem you can run into if you want to use a particular column to index your data is you must make sure that there is no space in between all the column. Like now, let me quickly check for detail of this data. Uh, this is db dot tail. You can check the last five data. That's the tail. Now, this is the last five data. Now you can see why I have 36. So in all the states, I made sure there's no space. So I, I put all of them together. That's number one. Number two is that if you look at what I want to do analysis on, it's on this lab confirm. That is lab confirm cases. This data was as at um, February. So these are the total number confirmed in each uh, state in Nigeria. So this lab confirmed cases. Before, the problem I run into is some of these data, they are having comma, they are wrongly formatted in such a way that I cannot operate, um, do some mathematical operation on them, if you can still remember. So now I go to my RGIS and I try to reach, uh, remove all those comma. That's why I have all this screen data now. So I just do start editing in RGIS and I edit it. So, and this is what it give me now. Now I have a clean data. So if you want to do analysis on any data, make sure it's a clean data, unless it will be running into issues. So now, what I need now, I want to index this data. Uh, I'm coming. This. I want to index this data. And the code to use for that is this. I will say database, my database, and I want to index it based on this object, based on this color, name one. So I want to index this database, set index on this name one. Drop, don't drop that column. That's why I put it as false. Then give me a summary of the whole data. So that's what this code is doing for me. And you see all the column I have in that data, you have name zero, name one, shape length, shape area, zone, that's not east and southwest, that's what the zone is standing from. And we have the GPS code, S and Y coordinate. We have the lab confirmed cases. So we have uh, on admission, on discharge, debt, the number of debt that we have, geometry. So on this tutorial, I will be using the lab confirm, but you can do the same analysis on number of debt cases. And let's see, how closer is that will also be. So uh, that can be our assignment.
but on today i will be working on these uh, lab confirmed cases and uh, if you look at, at this place you can see that we have different type of data types for this lab uh, lab confirmed cases you see that is an object data type which it can give us issue when we are running the program but i will show us how to solve this problem as we can proceed so now uh we can check the coordinate system so that we our our analysis will not fail you see what we are in uh, geographic coordinate system that means geodetic latitude and geodetic longitude oh you can't do any reasonable analysis on this type of datum so i need to reproject it to a um to a metric um coordinate system so that because I, I will be using distance for my weighting so i have to do that for me to have a correct uh answer at the end so to do that uh, i will just use one of my library which i have imported before see with joe pandas he has a lot of inbuilt function one of the function is to CRS, then I will supply the EGSG. These are the things that uh, AGIS or any GIS software use at the background that we don't know. So, but we can read more about EGSG. I think I have it open here. Let me check and show us. So, E3395 is word marketer. And it's in metric, the unit is in meter. So I want to use this for my transformation. So let me go back. That's why I specify it here. So now, when after he transform the old data, I want it to save it as database too. So I will no longer use DB again. I will not be using DB2. So let me run this. Now, let me continue. Uh, I can plot. Can plot my data now and see what I'm really working on. So just DB2 plot. And you see it's giving me Nigeria now. So let me proceed. Then next thing is to create weight, my weight matrix. And the code to create weight is just this one. Already we have imported weight library up there. So we now call the KNN, that's uh, nearest neighbor, which is working based on distance. And we'll be using five nearest neighbor. That means if you take one particular state, you will look at the nearest neighbor in that state, if they are correlate or not, then you use that to create weight. I've make a term, an elaborate lecture on that before. We can check our YouTube so that you understand what weight actually means. So with this, it will create weight W for me, which is what I need to create my um, special lag. And as you can see, we have a weight which is based on distance. So good. With this, I can proceed to generate my special lag. But before that, you know, I was talking about standardization before. So I need to standardize this data. I, uh, I have made a lecture on that also before. So we can also reference that lecture. Um, so to standardize, I will be using a rule standardization. That is, it will make sure that I don't have anything greater than one in my weight matrix. And from with that, I will be able to get correct answer. These are things that AGIS also do at the background. So now I've standardized my weight matrix. Now I want to, you know, I was talking about converting my object type. Yeah. This is my lab confirmed cases, which is an object type. I want to convert it to integer so that it will not run into problem. I will not run into problem when I am um, 
doing my uh, doing my log reading on it. Oh, sorry. Let me remove this. I want you to create another cell here. Yeah? Uh, oh. Remind me. Okay. Uh -huh. So I will use this coach. And this coach, what he's doing is that it's calling database to this row, which is lab confirmed cases. It's now saying, okay, well, this row should equal to database to lab confirmed cases and change this to as type integer it's a simple code and it will change everything to type integer so now there i can now find the log reading of my observation you know this is not my observation this lab uh confirm cases is my observation so i can find the log reading let me create another set down here paste now I'm calling num numpy, calling the function log reading on it. Then I'm now extracting that column from my series and it will give me my y. So from there, I just call y so that you can display what my y is. Now, as you can see, this first column is my index column. So it is giving me my answer based on my index column. Uh, as you can see, all my index colon now, no space there. Like cross river, I've adjusted everything is together. So now, like in Abia, we have this value. In Adamawa, we have this, and so on, and so on. In Lagos, uh, Lagos is believed to be an epicenter. So we have 10 points something. So I find the log reading of all the observed value in that, in each state with this code. Now, uh, let me now find the spatial lag. Remember the formula for finding the spatial lag is our observation multiplied by the weights. So we are multiplying the weight but by the observation. So there's a function already written in weight, which is called lag spatial. So, and that we, calculate our spatial lag for this data and store it in this column. So, you know, in our database before, there's no column for lag. If you look at it, we don't have lag column. But now, if we run this code, it will create another column called lag, L-A-G. So let me run it. Good. So I've run it. Now let me check my database too. Database too dot the first five value edge then let me run that now this is my data my data has not changed but now at the tail egg there you see it has included my spatial lag in my database good next thing now is i want to calculate my moran high since i've have the weight matrix I have the spatial lag now. Then I can use these two data to calculate my Moran high. So calculation of Moran high, that is the next step. Uh, that can be done using this code, this code, short code here. Because see, I called Moran function and I supply the column which I want you to use to multiply the matrix so and that will give me my moral high so if i run this you see now it's telling me i have a moral high calculated so now i can i can exploit this moral high by looking at its moral i value one of its attributes which is dot i i can look at it you see now you see it's positive value it means that we ask the, and what I calculate here now, what it give me, this value that it give me is the global spatial autocorrelation when we look at the whole of Nigeria. And what this is telling me is that we have a positive 
spatial autocorrelation with respect to COVID-19 cases in Nigeria. It means that we have high, high and low, low concentrated in a, in a particular place. So, but we will not know how we can deal with this unless we look at the local spatial autocorrelation. From there, we will look at, we will be able to see how the cluster, uh, uh, how this value was being distributed over space. But now, it's telling us that we have a positive spatial autocorrelation. And the value, which is higher than zero, shows confirm that uh, stand. So another thing we can check, we can check the p-value. Of this of this data, like you're saying, more high, me high dot p. Sorry, dot p. Let me run this. Oh, I have error. Let me see. Okay, p name supposed to be p name. So let me rerun it. P name. So that will give me my p value. Knowing statistics, you see now. Is telling me the percentage of all these in a global view is just 0 0.072. So that means we don't really have cases of COVID-19 in Nigeria. So that's what this is telling me. Now, let's confirm it when we look at this value locally, what is happening in each state. So now this will take me to what we call local spatial autocorrelation. And in this, what will I do? Now, before I move away from here, I can quickly do the modern plot, the scatter plot, and see how this value is distributed globally. So let me look at the scatter plot. Ah, and now when you look at the scatter plot, you see that at this space of high, high value, we have very scanty numbers. But we have much of low, low. Why we have much of uh, low high, they, they are, our outliers are also very scanty. We have uh, scanty outliers, but most uh, observation is based on low, low. That means there's no much uh, uh, cases of COVID-19 in Nigeria. Let me just, that's what my, my moral scatter plus is telling me now. Okay. Now, let's see it graphically in a local view. And to do that, I will just break my observation. I will do my local spatial autocorrelation now. And one of the thing, one of the code that we use is moral local. Moral local is different from the function I called before, which is moral. So in this one, I want more and local, and I want to use my spatial lag to calculate, uh, to multiply my spatial weight. And it should do the calculation based on local auto, sorry, sp uh, local spatial autocorrelation and store the value in LSASE. So let me run this. It's doing the calculation. It's a lot of calculation. So it's, it's done now. Now, let me look, quickly look at the results. And uh, the way I will look at the results, I want to classify those values that are significant into one quadrant, those ones that are not significant into another quadrant. So let's look at this code together. Let me copy it so that because of time. Now, but we want to break our observation into significant or those ones that are not significant. Now, in our database, we want to create a colon called significant. So, and we are using our L L L L I S A, which is here. I'm calling P slim. You know, I use this P slim here. And I want to separate any value that is less than 0 0.05 should be stored in significant. Are you getting me? That's p-value in statistics. Any value less than this to be stored in significant. 
that is that area that location you see uh, the, uh, the the observation there is highly significant that means the issue of covid 19 is highly pronounced in that area so now after storing that then we want to store the quadrant they belong to so we can call on this allies we cannot call p store that in also in the quadrant color so when we run this it runs so then i can i can look at my database again and you will see all this value there database two dot edge bracket open bracket close then i run this if you scroll down you see that we have significant like in this four state now here is this significant you say false is this significant here false is this significant here false so which quadrant does it for? Quadrant four, quadrant four, quadrant three. Don't forget which quadrant. One, two, three, four. This is the fourth quadrant. That means it's low, low. That means the value in all these places is low, low. See, quadrant three, that means it's low, high. So these are how to interpret all this data. Now, Let's look at a better way of doing it. Let's call that column out from our database. Let's query our significant and see per state now. Now, you see, Abia, the observation in Abia is not that significant. You see, many of them are not that significant. But when you come to Kogi, Kogi is claiming that they don't have Kogi in anything, but my statistics is telling me that the value they observe in Kogi is significant. In Quara is significant, in Lagos is significant, then in Ogu is significant, uh, in Ondo is not significant, in Oshun is significant, in Oyo, the same thing is significant. So now, with this, I think I'm getting somewhere now. I cannot plot it on a map. Uh, so that, uh, because anything that is still like this, I uh, will not really uh understand it better until it gets to map so but i can still query out the quadrant so that we can see what is going on quadrant that all these things also belongs to you see i call the first um five data you see this is the quadrant now where i'm going before the time goes run start is i want to plot it on a map and we will now look at it together and interpret our data so on a map now, using the database that we have, you see? So this is where we are going. Those places in red, <laughs> those are the all sports area. And Lagos is included. You see those places in yellow, they are, they are less, they are high low. That means they have a negative uh, autocorrelation in that area. That means the high value are scantily far apart from each other in this locality. And you see now, the, the, those ones that are not significant now, there are very many. Many states in Nigeria, they have value that are not significant. So that means COVID-19 concentrates in just this area. Ah, that is what the statistics is telling me based on this. But today, we have been able to look at global spatial autocorrelation, local spatial autocorrelation. Uh, we can see the difference. The local one will tell us how this thing actually happened by a particular, in a particular location. While the global will only give us a value and give us a scatter plot about it. So, uh, and from this picture now we can see, oh, if any government wants to take action now, they know that they have to concentrate more on this area. Than, so they can take a little or no effort here. But still, they will not... Uh, let, let's say this is an, a crime issue now. Like, let's say this bandit record recorded in Nigeria. You know that if you, they want to make any decision now, they have to send more military to this area. Because this analysis tells us that bandit issue happen more in this area. 
So I'm just citing an example of how GIS can help the uh, government make a reasonable decision in their planning. So that is what I have for us on spatial autocorrelation. Maybe